again, we are working on the quadratic attributes in Delta Math. This is the appropriate domain for real world functions. Sorry. All right, so anyway, this one here can, uh, the numbers seem to work out pretty well. It's what most people mess up on is the ending part. <coughs> so here we go. A company manufactures and sells shirts. The daily, prof, uh, the daily profit the company makes depends on how many shirts they sell. Of course, the more shirts you sell, the more money you're gonna make. The profit in dollars when the company sells X shirts, so X represents the number of shirts can be found in the function. So remember, X represents the number of shirts. This here is Y when you have X number of shirts. Find and interpret the given function value and determine the appropriate domain of the function. Okay, so here we go. So negative seven. So we're gonna put this in our calculator. We're gonna say, we, we can put this whole, in fact, we can do decimals here. We can put, uh, I'm gonna put, clean this up. We're gonna put this problem right here and there, uh, 5X minus 50. All right, so there's my line. And we can actually hit this little gear here and hit table and now we see all the numbers and now we can actually put numbers in the table. All right, so the first number is negative seven. So we're gonna put negative seven in for X and do the math, all right? But we're gonna have calculator do it. So we're gonna put negative seven here. All right, so I get a negative 85. So I'm going to say that this is negative 85, was it negative five? I can't remember. Yep, negative 85. All right, so what does this mean? Now remember X represents the negative uh, number of shirts. So if you sell negative seven shirts, which you can't sell negative seven shirts, everything has to be a positive number, means that the company sells negative seven shirts and they would make a negative $85 profit, which then they ask you, does this make sense or not? Well, I hopefully you'd say, no, this does not make sense because you can't sell negative shirts. All right, 14 shirts. All right, so now we're looking at something serious. So 14 shirts. So we go here, we're gonna put a 14 here and it says 20. So 20 is my answer. So if I put 14 in and what I'm doing is putting 14 in here, multiply by five and subtract 50 from it. And then my answer is 20. That's my profit, okay? The $50 here is probably materials and stuff like buying the shirts, the stain or whatever you're doing to the shirt to sell it. Okay, it costs you $50 per shirt. So, or $50 to buy all the equipment. So we made $20 profit. So what does this mean? That means there is, we sold 14 shirts. We made a $20 profit. Does this make sense? Hopefully you would say, yes, it makes sense. All right, so 14.5. All right, so we're gonna put 14.5 in here. That makes it 22.50. All right, so we'll say 22.50. So what this means, we sell 14.5 shirts. That would make a profit of $22.50. Okay, now this is where it gets tricky because you have to think logically. Sometimes it, it just depends on the way the author does it. This is one of the most, I think, problems that kids and even teachers have is because when people make, they, they don't know if this person's thinking logically or if they're just putting numbers in here. Remember the X value represents a shirt. Can you have a half a shirt? Well, technically, no, you can't buy half of a shirt. So in technical terms, it should not make sense. I mean, seriously, you shouldn't make sense if you bought a half a shirt and you and look, you can't buy a half shirt. But sometimes they don't look at it that way. Sometimes they say the math wise, it makes sense. All right, so it does. I mean, you think about it, you sold 14 and a half shirts, your math puts a month in there. Math wise, it does make sense. You can sell, you, you sell for 22 and a half cents or $22.50. This is, it's confusing because you, it's almost like a gamble. All right. Uh, some of the ones that I've done were the half a half and it's like like can of paint, gallons of paint. You can't, I mean, 
you can't buy half a gallon. I guess you could, but you can't buy half a shirt. So I'm going to say this one does not make sense because you most definitely can't buy half of a shirt. All right. All right, based on this observation, is, is it clear that an appropriate domain for this function is? All right, so this is the domain. And you remember domain is the shirts. All right, so again, you have to watch out because you can't have negative shirts. So anything that's negative, you can't have. All right, could you have all whole numbers? Could you buy zero shirt, one shirt, two shirt? Yes, you could. A negative real number means you could have fractions or decimals. So it's either going to be non-negative real numbers or whole numbers. In my eyes, it's whole numbers because you can't buy half of a shirt. All right, so let's see what they tell us. It's very possible we could get this wrong according to the author of this question. And we got it right. It's amazing. They do think of it. So we got it right. But remember, when you do these, sometimes the author is thinking one thing and you're thinking another. You have to kind of think, can you actually have a half? And no, it doesn't make sense because you can't buy half a shirt. Okay. And the domain is, think about it, you could buy one, zero shirts, one shirt, two shirt, but you can't have a fraction. If we had an opportunity where you could buy half, you know, like a half a gallon, then yes, you could have, you'd have something different here. You wouldn't have whole numbers. Let's try another one. We'll try another one. All right, so here you go. No one is standing in a stadium and has the option of running up and up a stair and down a stairs for exercise. The function is here. Oh my gosh, they got absolute value in this guy. These bars here mean absolute value. We'll determine how many calories Nolan will burn if he runs up X steps. You know what? We're going to change this because I don't think we're even, you know, we'll just try it. We'll see what happens. All right, so we'll try. Uh, we'll determine how many calories Nolan will burn if he runs up X steps. So X represents the number of steps he takes. Use a negative value for the X if he runs down the stairs. Oh boy, this is going to be really good. Find and interpret the given function values and determine if the appropriate value remains. All right, so here we go. So I'm going to go and I'm going to put this in decimals and I'm going to write this down because there's no way I'm going to remember this equation. Gosh, my nose is bothering me today. All right, so, all right, so here we go. Let's go to Desmos. We'll, hopefully, we can get this in here. I don't know if we are or not. Okay, one divided by fifty. I don't know if you put an absolute value in here. Oh, we're going to try absolute value. Well, I guess it did work. Well, we're going to try it and see what happens. Delta man. All right, so negative 25. So we're going to go back and I'm going to hit table because my gosh. I'm All right, so negative 25. So I'm going to put a five in here. All right, so it's one. I should test the math just to make sure. 25, that's 100. Absolute value is, let me try. I just want to make sure this math is correct. So if I did negative uh, 25, that would make it negative 100, which makes that 100. This would be uh, minus 50. And yes, so that, that worked out good. So the answer is one. So the math actually worked good. All right, which means Nolan runs 20 uh, down 25 steps because it's negative, remember? Down is negative. He will burn <laughs> one calorie. Wow, slow down there, man. Does this interpretation, it makes sense? Well, yeah, if he, that's, if he runs downstairs and he burns one county, he burns one county. 
All right, so let's do 15. So now I'm going to go ahead and change this to 15. 1.8. So 1.8. Nolan runs up 15 flights there. Or so he burns 1.8. Calories. Does this make sense? Yes, this makes sense. 37.5. All right. 37.5 is 4.5. Which means Nolan ran up. 3.75 series where he burned 4.5. Yes, does this make sense? Okay. Can he run half a step? Now I would say no, he can't run half step. Okay, so think about it. You a step's a step. You can't take half a step. All right. So now this is gonna be the phone because you can have negative numbers and you have positive numbers. All right. So you can't have, technically, you can't have fractions in my eyes, according to the author, you might, I don't know. All right, so I'm going to say, um, okay, this is all real numbers, includes fractions, includes, um, like, fractions, decimals, everything, so that's no. Non-negative, no, because you can go downstairs. Um, real numbers, no, because you said integers. Integers can be positive and negative numbers. So I'm going to say integers. I mean, it's just integers. It's not fractions or decimals. It's whole numbers. Hopefully, we got this right. Da -da, we did. We did great on that one. All right, basically, see how this works? The fun part is trying to make sure you get your reasoning down. So but just about all these are the same way. You kind of like put the numbers in. And the big part is when you have a fraction or decimal, you got to make sense of it. Does, can you walk, like, can you go half a mile? Yes, you can. So this one will be okay. And if that's okay, that means you're probably going to pick something like, uh, uh, non-real negative numbers. I mean, these are questions that you have to kind of make sure you do, okay?